Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Patrick and I are back at it today and look what's happening. All this talk of, oh no, we better get this place emptied before snow and it's snowing. It's snowing. Yep. Uh, stopped for breakfast at the a &W behind us there. I had to get my hot chocolate to go because it came out almost vending machine hot. <laughs> if you're old enough, you'll remember what that's like when you get a hot chocolate or a coffee out of a vending machine and it's so hot it'll like melt the styrofoam cup that it comes in. <laughs> that was the worst when you were a kid. Anyway. Um, we're headed back to the house this morning. Uh, the auction company is coming to get the last load of furniture and we're gonna start with some pretty major clear out of the house. So follow along on today's adventure while I finish my hot chocolate. Um, Patrick comes along for a ride and hopefully we make a really big dent today. Today's gonna be the day where we make a big dent in this place. Let's go. So here's the plan today. We are gonna be brutal and try and get rid of as much of this stuff to charity as possible so I have less to carry back home. Still sifting and sorting through boxes and looking through treasures all along the way. Patrick, um, I'll take this, I'll do that box in a second. Patrick is hauling stuff out to the truck for charity. And in uh, a matter of probably a half hour or so, the guys from the auction house are gonna come and pick up the remainder of the furniture that's in the house and hopefully the last of the furniture that's in the garage. Once that's all done today, um, either later today or tomorrow, we're gonna start taking anything that's good left out to the garage so I can just come and make trips and haul it on back. The goal, get this living room emptied, get the other bedrooms emptied and have the main floor pretty much taken care of and done. It's gonna be a busy day. There's gonna be a lot to do. So I better get to it. Getting stuff ready to donate. And uh, yeah, I know that sometimes these uh, old VHS tapes can hold some value. And I was looking at this, there was all these wrapped up presents from who knows when. What were they giving as gifts? The Platter's Greatest Hits on 8-Track. This is probably the last in history of mankind, the last unopened eight track Christmas present ever. And I see that there's a bunch in the bottom here that uh, nobody ever got to open. That's gonna be eight track too. So eight tracks for Christmas in 1975 that never were opened. That's kind of insane when you think about it. But uh, it'd be Christmas for someone, just not for us. As I continue to sort and do the transfer, a couple things. One, nothing like going through a house that already gives you the creeps and finding a uh, cup from the Winchester Mystery House. Woo! Woo! <laughs> kind of neat. I didn't even know that they uh, had such a thing. Also found a little taxidermy bird and a bunch of cuckoo clocks. In fact, a whole box full of cuckoo clocks. And people go cuckoo for cocoa clocks. <laughs> or wait, is that cocoa puffs? That was cuckoo clocks. Anyway, um, so I was kind of sifting out just sort of the generic decorations out of the box and trying to get the uh, cuckoo clocks and their pendulums into a safer container so I can get that transported back home in one piece. Look, there's a little tiny, like a battery operated looking cuckoo clock, even though it's not. It's kind of a cool little touristy thing though. Seems like the sort of thing that would have come from like a gift shop in the Black Forest region or something, or maybe it's made in China, but uh, that's like the, if you don't want to spend the money on a real cuckoo clock, you can take this trinket home for $2.99. Okay, we keep digging stuff out of here. Oh, there's a little gun bear. And uh, see what else is at the bottom of this box. Like that. See, look, another cuckoo clock. That's, I think, the third or fourth cuckoo clock I found. That's kind of a nice, it's a fancy one. These are always really popular. Mechanical stuff always is. These chains are and can be a nightmare, but I know how to uh, get the weights back on and get those things working again. 
just a challenge. In fact, at my store, I used to have people bring me cuckoo clocks to try and get them going again. That's uh, that's a set of weights for one of the clocks. Got to get all the parts, all the pieces. Make sure you don't forget anything when you're going through something like this. Random bagged up doll. It's old. Worth bringing an old skipping rope. Like that's your old school classic skipping rope, your jump rope. I wonder if my daughter or son might want to use that. I don't think we have one around the house right now. The uh, nylon ones never really seem to last that long. It's a, a candle. Perfectly good candle, just don't need a candle. Well, I'll keep going through and setting everything aside and hopefully I'll have a nice box of cuckoo clocks by the end of all this. That's for the canning container, some old duster. That's a hand-tooled leather purse, kind of neat. Set that aside. Just stuffing out of an egg or a apple carton, newspaper. And underneath it all, there's floor. Pink, 1970s, glorious carpeting. Oh, those are light bulbs. A picture book of Yorkshire. Where you can see other rundown buildings other than the one we're in right now. Had just a little skiff of snow. The sun is out and hopefully it'll melt off Ooh, before we have to go anywhere. I am uh, just going to open up the garage door for the guys because they're going to try and grab some of this stuff. Now I'm a little concerned because the truck is almost halfway full and there's a lot of stuff to go here. So I'm going to have to be specific, I think, with what's going and what's staying. Some of this won't, uh, you know, like these 1980s sort of wall cabinet things, those aren't going to sell. But pretty much all this stuff is probably sellable. We'll get as much of this out of here. Oh, geez, the door only opened halfway. Work door, work. No. Uh oh. That's not good. <laughs> Trying to figure out what can go and see that they had a lot to sell at a garage sale around here. Um, we can probably sell that piece there and the knee hole desk behind it, the two antique treadle sewing machines with all their drawers and it feels like the sewing machine's in it still, which is good. That's another sewing machine cabinet right there. Roll top desk. So I'm just kind of go, gonna go through the list here of things that are sellable. And I think we're only gonna go so far back until we start hitting stuff that, frankly, I can't do much with. I'll have to donate or uh, give away. But we'll make a dent, hopefully get some sellable items here. And our uh, first auction at the time of this filming is coming up right away. So we wanna make sure that all, as much sellable furniture gets back because uh, in about four or five days time, people will be bidding on this stuff, believe it or not. You know, we have dollies if you need it. As much as that's impressive, I worry about your back. Just heave hoeing on a giant cabinet over there. Okay, and uh, Patrick's building a few boxes so we can start getting stuff uh, packed up in there. Ooh, we're pretty snug in there. Last load of furniture off to the auction, which is happening uh, this coming weekend. The guys are taking off. Unfortunately, a lot of this other furniture that was in the garage was water damaged, warped, or frankly, too far gone. Not that it's not repairable, but I don't want to be selling junk at the auction, so we'll have to find another uh, another home for it. Well, Pat, you getting hungry? I am. Okay, let's uh, head on in, make a donation, and uh, go for lunch. I'm proud.
proud to say we now have another room done. The sauna is completely emptied out and ready for some Scandinavian uh, good times in here. That took a little bit of doing. Actually, that took a lot of doing. Just notice this trim has come off the window. I mean, oh yeah, there's no fixing that. And looks like a, uh, a, a tent randomly behind there. Other than that though, this room is pretty well ready to go. So I'm gonna back away, continue vacuuming the rest of the room. As we were digging around in the garage and getting stuff ready to go to auction, found a couple boxes of more bottles. So we've come back to the local bottle depot here and hoping that's gonna be uh, maybe a little bit of gas money or something. We'll see, <laughs> every little bit helps right now. Let's go in. The situation right now um, is that I don't wanna be out at the house anymore. Um, I have to start sorting, getting ready for an auction sale and that's gonna take a lot of work in town. So I am gonna drive over right now to see if the uh, local U-Haul dealer has a trailer that I can rent and we might start making some trips even today back to the city, uh, which will be a lot of driving, but at least we'll start getting this place emptied out. Um, the other thing is we need another dumpster and uh, I didn't know if I'd be able to get one because it's late in the day and we discovered that a lot of the furniture that was in the garage that I thought was sellable, when we got back to it, it was water damaged uh, and broken. So unfortunately um, not usable. So um, we do need a dump bin so we can get rid of that stuff. Um, they said that they might be able to get us one tomorrow morning. And we're only out here for a couple days this time. So it's gonna be a bit of a pinch to see if we can get that dumpster in time. So we'll see, um, busy couple days, but I'm hoping to make it to the U-Haul place before they close, which uh, might be in about five minutes. So <laughs> luckily this is a small town, so I have a hope of getting there before they do. We'll find out. Well, they closed early. <laughs> I should have been able to be there, uh, but they closed 30 minutes early today. So no truck and trailer for us tonight. So I gotta come up with plan B. So for now, we've moved on to plan B, which is getting um, all the stuff which we've sorted as being sellable and needing to be transported back to the city out to the garage. The furniture being out of here really opens it up. Where Patrick is working on clearing out, uh, are you doing the bedroom first? Yeah, um, most of that stuff is like smaller. Okay. Miscellaneous stuff, I'm gonna box it up and um, I'm just putting this in the back room. Okay, so we're emptying out the rooms Emptying out the living room. We're gonna try and get the house more or less cleaned up and everything in the garage. Then I can vacuum and pretty much uh, call it a wrap on the interior of the house anyway, for now. And we've got more DVDs. So far I have moved 1,400 DVDs from this house over to my place. Um, and those are gonna be going to auction at some point. I bundled them up and look, we found more DVDs. Um, so yeah. A lot of movies, a lot of boxes, a lot of work. What did I expect? This house was hoarded and I knew what I was getting into. I've been busy cleaning out the remainder of the kitchen cabinets and getting stuff set aside uh, that could be reused, either through charity or through auction. And I found something I wasn't expecting to find, margarine container, and what's inside? Keys for the Corvette. I wonder if the people who bought the car, or maybe the car had to get towed somewhere. Anyway, finding those hidden in the back in a margarine container. So you gotta open up all the, actually, what was it? Lactose-free cottage cheese container is where they had those hidden. Be nice if I found the Corvette hidden around here somewhere. That would be, that would be fun. Open the garage up, what? There's a Corvette, oh. That's how my voice would sound, by the way, incidentally. I think, I think we would have noticed if there was a Corvette gonna be around here somewhere. Well, here comes the vacuum test. This is all, I think, cat hair. Luckily, we didn't find any cats.
check this out, guys. I am standing in what would be the dining room. And Patrick is over there in what would be the living room. And this was kind of a deluxe house, hey, Patrick? Yeah. Like at one time. Yeah, it seems like it. It's all, all pre-wired with uh, speaker outlets throughout the house. So it had uh, pretty deluxe stereo built into the home at one point. It had a sauna. This would have been a swinging kind of 70s house. Yeah. It's your typical ranch style home with the uh, split level design. You go up to the right to the bedrooms. And a lot of people watching were saying, my grandparents had a house just like that. I think everybody's grandparents had a house just like this. But look at how much room we have. I'm standing in the corner. Look, look how much space there is. Crazy. And you can see the stuff was on the floor for a long time based on how indented those things are. Well, we did quite a bit of work up here. I go around my tripod here and in the kitchen while well, we just have our clothes for the hotel. Uh, air conditioner unit I'm going to give to Patrick. Some flower bins that Melissa wants. Uh, some corral that we're going to hang on to. So I'll corral that down to the garage. And that's one major giant room completely finished. And the folks whom we're doing this work for uh, brought us cookies and some homemade uh, food. So we've got supper planned for tonight. Woohoo! Uh, but there's one thing that I haven't done before we go, Patrick. I have to go in the attic. I got to go in the attic. This has to be the moment where I go in the attic. I feel like this series has turned into an unintentional promotional video for Kirby vacuum. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I'm going to stand out of the way. I'm going to stand off over here because I don't know what's going to come out of here. I can see a little bit of... It, like it should just be insulation. Here, Patrick, can you just in one sec? All right, let's see what is in the attic. Ooh, Ooh it's drafty up here. Um, insulation, some plastic, roofing nails. I thought I heard skittering. Nothing. Thank goodness. I'm actually relieved. Want anything in the plastic? Well, oh, that plastic is just brittle. Look, it doesn't, you can't even lift it anymore. It's turning back into dust. All right. I'm going to get out of this attic before I catch 15 different types of diseases from the 70s that you don't get from going to discos. <laughs> You know what would be really good right about now, Patrick? What? Road cookie. Road cookies. Road cookies. <laughs> Wait, that's not like slang for anything, is it? <laughs> you better watch out for them Polish guys. They'll turn you into a road cookie. I hope not. I'm in there peanut butter. Okay. All right. It is morning at the hotel or motel, I should say. Patrick is waking up. <laughs> um, thank you very much to the folks who brought us cookies and uh was it borscht no it was borscht it was, a, it, was like it was like a cabbage soup kind of thing and those anyway it was good um we're gonna head over this morning for a sing and uh go grab a trailer because i missed it yesterday they closed it wasn't i, I guess it was kind of my fault because i went late in the day but they did close a half hour early hopefully they're there on time this morning it says it's a guaranteed pickup time and today is going to be all about making trips out of that house and trying to get as much stuff emptied out as possible. This week, I really want to be done, and uh, hopefully we're going to make that happen. We're going to start getting loaded up. It looks like the uh, dumpster is here in the backyard, which is perfect. We're going to go do a trip first and then come back and load that. But I did have an exciting discovery. This. Now, um, searching through houses like this, sometimes you can find hidden boxes and things that uh, appear. And I ended up uh, finding some neat things. <laughs> I'm not gonna show you on this video. This will be a whole other video on its own. I had a peek and guys made the whole trip worthwhile. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek right now though. Well, I have to admit, I'm pretty happy with how I packed this load in the truck. I still have a bit of room at the back end. And the best part, let me show you guys. Patrick's over there. 
loading up the trailer. How's the trailer going, by the way? Yeah, it's almost, it's almost full. Almost full? Okay. Still marveling at the empty living room. Almost looks like a house again. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. Look, I almost got everything empty out of here, other than uh, a few empty bins. That's almost all done. That room, of course, was done before. And this room just needs to be swept and some garbage picked up. So this upstairs is essentially done. What a great feeling that is. Whew. I'm pooped. I'm getting my steps in on my step counter today. That was a lot of walking. Okay, let's see how the trailer's going. Two thirds, and I have a little bit of room in the truck still too. Oh yeah, it's like, maybe not quite, just a little over half full. There's still lots of room. Okay, well, I'm gonna load up the rest of the uh, truck with some loose stuff and then uh, we'll fill up the trailer. I would like to get Predator home at some point too. Well, we still got a fair bit of room. We only have this pretty much, so. I think we could do a truckload and then the tra put Predator in the trailer. trailer on the way back. Yeah, yeah we'll saying. try, but he's going to be really heavy. We'll have to walk him out. It's going to look really weird waddling this guy out there. We should just leave him in the window with the lights on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Neighborhood kids walking by. Ah! Well, that's why I've been playing Tetris at that trailer, trying to make sure we can get as much stuff as we can in there. Okay. And some of these are empty boxes too, so it's not even yeah. as daunting as it looks. A lot of these are empty. Okay. Just the stuff up there. We have to All right. Well, I'm going to start packing in the truck then. Well, we're just filling up for gas right now. We're almost home with our first trip. Stopped here and it says, no shoes, no shirt, no service. And I'm almost wondering what happens if you're only wearing shoes and a shirt? <laughs> Maybe they'll really let you in, who knows? We got this dumpster dropped and I said, don't put it near the tree because we can't get the door open. And uh, we're having to really pop it open because that handle's meant to go all the way over. We should bring the uh, shelf over on this side first before we open it. Yep. I just want to make sure how far it opens. Enough, I guess if we go around this way. I think it'll be open. No. Okay. Well, at least it opened up. Slowly making progress in the garage. Actually, it's a fair bit of progress. We're leaving that box there because it's actually new uh, curtains for inside the house. Patrick found a suitcase that appears to be full of mold. Yeah. What's inside? Some hockey skates. And a really moldy briefcase. And another moldy briefcase with nothing in it. Yeah. I think because of the mold issue, unfortunately, it's got to be garbage. And you should probably wash your hands after, too. I'm going through these boxes over here, finding some neat, uh, really early young girl uh, and children's uh, storybooks and some old Winchester calendars. Like I said, they did have a uh, gun shop at one time, so that's pretty collectible. I'm going through these posters and just making sure that, uh, you know, it looks like there's a lot of Winchester stuff in here, things that are possibly sellable, good uh, marketable items. So... We keep thinning stuff out until we get, because uh, I'm trying to get these cabinets uh, out, of, out of the garage so it's out of the way. But before I do that, I got to sort all this stuff first. Just what I'm doing right now. Go. Cool. This is the one thing that we've been sort of dreading loading, but also the most important thing to buy from the house. Unfortunately, to get him moved, has to go on a flat cart, and I have to get into a very awkward position with our predator friend here to put a little weight on it so I can scoot it forward at the same time and keep his dreadlocks off the ground. So uh, Patrick's gonna come over and give me a hand, uh, but I, <laughs> this would make a terrible Christmas card. <laughs> terrible Christmas card right here. Patrick, thank you. Predator is in. As we were bringing him in, we realized that he uh, comes apart at the waist. So uh, that happened. The head might come off as well, but it was stuck. Oh, boy, that's, that's a well-made thing that is. But uh, I'll ask the auction house to help offload it tomorrow, since they're gonna be the one selling it. Selling it. 
Okay, Patrick, we got a Christmas tree for you, a Mystic Serenity <laughs> diffuser fountain, a barbecue set. Let's get the Patrick stuff loaded up. Let's go. Predator and a Christmas tree in the same truck. Predator and Christmas tree. What happened to Santa? <laughs> uh, why, that's the old German version of Santa Claus. Uh, okay, you got the little table. We're uh, not going to load a whole bunch. Of, there's probably one more truckload of stuff, truthfully. All these little odds and ends that... Uh, I was hoping to be done with this place today. Fortunately, it's not going to happen. You know it's good when it's locked boxes, and we found the keys. Um, currency, money, jewelry. That's going uh, to get sorted. It's gonna go get sorted at home and we'll do an unboxing video, probably live going through this stuff. So stay tuned for that. And then all that will end up going off to the auction house for safekeeping and to be sold off. But today's the day that I ended up getting the goods. Um, so I'm gonna get that loaded up first and then we're gonna load up the rest of the truck with some of the other antiques. So that's it for today's episode. The upstairs of the house is almost done. The garage in the back that was full is almost empty. Aside from a couple little things left behind. Look at this, you could actually park in here now. I've got my little variety of uh, things that need to go back to the city. That'll be on the next trip. But I am just about done with this place and I couldn't be more pleased to be almost done because I'm exhausted and Patrick's exhausted too. We're gonna head back into town, call it a night. But thank you guys very much for watching today's episode. We'll see you all soon. And as always, bye. bye.